Hello there guys, and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I am going to be showing you a really, really, really awesome arc build that I've made for Hunters, um, that I think you'll like a lot. So, the exotic that we're going to be using in this build is the Assassin's Cow, and pretty much what this does is powered melee final blows, so, you know, actually using your melee charge, will grant invisibility and restore health and shields, which is really nice, um, because of the build that we have set out for this exotic, um, you're going to be practically unkillable with this, and you'll have invis to mess around with uh, whenever you like. Um, and then finishes and final blows against more powerful targets, uh, you know, with your melee, um, will increase the duration of that invis and the amount of health that you actually gain. Um, but you could pretty much use this against anything. I mean, if you want to use this against mages and ultras, you can, because we have a lot of ways of increasing our melee damage. Um, even without things like Liar Handshake. Um, I did think about using Liar's Handshake for this build. Um, but, you know, it's a very overdone build. It's very, like, a lot of people are already using it. And I wanted to show off an exotic that's a little bit more underrated and under the radar right now. Um, even though there are a lot of Assassin's Cow users out there, sure. Um, there's more Liar's Handshake users out there for definite. So... I wanted to bring Assassin's Cowl into the spotlight and show you what this thing can really do. So, with the new upgraded Arc 3.0 Arc Strider, uh, this is what we're going to be using for, with Assassin's Cowl. So, first off we have Gathering Storm, which is kind of just, you know, you, you can use whatever you want really, but I'm using Gathering Storm because I am using Touch of Malice for DPS, since it out damages most heavies in the game. Um, and, you know, it's just a very, very reliable weapon for DPS. Um, obviously, I'm only going to be using that with teammates that have wells and, and rifts and such. Um, but, you know, it's still nice for solo play. Uh, not so much without a rift, but it's still nice. So I'm using Gathering Storm to help it out as well, because it's just a nice thing to have in the background while you're doing damage with other weapons. So, yeah. Uh, then we have Gambler's Dodge, which is going to restore our melee ability when we dodge near enemies. This is going to be important later on, so keep this in mind. Uh, and then we have Combination Blow which is an arc melee that basically is going to fully restore my class ability uh, when I get kills with the melee, and it's going to restore health. So Assassin's Cow is going to restore health when we get kills uh, with a powered melee, and Combination Blow, which is our powered melee, is also going to restore health on top of that and give me my class ability back. And then when we use my class ability, uh, we're going to get our melee back. So we have an infinite loop of class abilities and melees uh, that's going to heal us by a lot. And it's also going to make us invis, which is great. Your grenade is completely optional. You can use what you want. I like using storm grenades, but if you want to use something like flashbangs, which has a low cooldown, you can. But anything's, anything goes here. Uh, then we have lethal current, which is after dodging, your next melee attack has increased lunge, lunge range, jolts the target, and creates a damaging aftershock. Now, the good part about this is you're going to be dodging a ton. Dodging gives you your melee back, which means your next melee is always going to be a powered melee. Um, and that means that the powered melee is going to jolt the target, create a damaging aftershock, it's going to turn you invis, and it's going to heal you. Awesome. Um, and then damaging any jolted target after that with a melee attack will actually blind them, which is great too. Now pairing with that, we have flow state, which is defeating a jolted target. So this will be jolting, and now, now we're defeating them. Uh, that will make you amplified. And when you're amplified, your dodge will recharge more quickly, um, and you're more resilient while you're dodging, and your reload speed is greatly increased. So, already, we have all of these things that kind of just cycle together and work pretty much infinitely together to give you jolt, uh, blinding, amplification, invis, health, infinite melees, and class abilities. It's awesome. It really is awesome. Um, now, for the fragments, this is where it gets even better. Defeating a jolted target will create an ionic trace. So we're going to be jolting everything. We're going to be killing those jolted targets and they're going to create an ionic trace. Now what an ionic trace does, it's like a little seeker thing on the ground that will follow you. It'll touch you and then you'll get ability energy for all of your abilities. Um, this here is mostly to help the grenades because obviously we have infinite um, class ability and melees anyway. So this is here to get you more grenades if you like using grenades. Um, obviously I don't have too much dis, so I can't really, you know do much with that but it's whatever um now if you're also wondering why i have moby and strength you know even though i can already get infinite 
of these, it's a failsafe. None of the other stats really matter. We're healing so much that we don't need recov. Intellect is honestly not necessary when you have Touch of Malice, since you get your super back so fast when firing that thing. Discipline, sure, you can go for that if you want. Um, resilience, of course, you want 100 for that, which is why I have it, because 40% DR is insane. But yeah, the Moby is just for the added effects on top of the dodge, um, because having high Moby on a Hunter is really nice anyway, because of jump height and whatnot. Um, but yeah, for the class ability and the strength portion of things, like getting your melee back, it's just a fail safe in case something goes wrong with these. Because one mess up, if you've got no stats in these, you're going to be waiting a long time to get these back. So, you know, it's always nice to have infinite of them, even without actually having an infinite source of them. So yeah, that's, that's kind of my thought process behind that. But if you want to change it up, you can. Now, next up... We have taking melee damage briefly increases your outgoing melee damage. Now, this is one portion of making our melee stronger that we have in the build. This is just nuts. I don't know how much it increases the melee damage by, um, but it is super nice because you're going to be up close and personal with enemies anyway because you're always going to be meleeing them to get invis and to jolt and whatever, and they will sometimes melee you back, and that means your melee will do even more damage, which is awesome. Then we have while we're amplified, our arc special weapon final blows create a blinding explosion. Uh, of course, it is very easy to get Amplified, and I have Forbearance, which is a Arc Special Grenade Launcher with Chain Reaction, which means every single kill with the Chain Reaction and the Grenade itself will actually blind enemies while I am Amplified, which is awesome. And of course, Amplification lasts a long time, and you can also just get it back very, very easily, especially in this build. So you're going to be blinding a lot of things when you're just running around with that uh, Grenade Launcher or whatever Arc Special you have equipped. I do recommend having an arc special weapon equipped. However, if you do want to use whatever you like and you don't even want to use arc stuff, you can put in whatever fragment you want. Um, it is completely up to you. You could have arc grenades jolt. This is really nice, actually. Like, I, I do recommend having this as well um, because that's more source of Arnett Tracers and jolting is just very powerful in general. Uh, and then finally, we have Spark of Resistance, which is while surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage. This is incredible because we are going to be up close and personal with a ton of enemies, meleeing them uh, and jolting them and doing everything we can to just delete them with our melee abilities and whatever else, right? To become invis and get health and whatever. So being just more resistant to damage, just having more DR for free for just being around them is incredible. So that is the Hunter build. Very straightforward um, for the actual subclass. Getting into the mods... I have Radiant Light and Powerful Friends for stats. If you don't want to use these, or if you're not going for these stats, then you don't have to put those in. You can put whatever you want in. I recommend more sources of wells, or if you want to use Explosive Wellmaker with Well of Life in those two slots, uh, you can, because Forbearance is, of course, explosive. Your grenades are explosive. Um, I'm not sure if the damaging aftershock in lethal current counts as explosive damage maybe uh correct me if you know or just like let me know in the comments i guess if that is the case um but your super will count as an explosive so you could use that if you want more healing um but yeah i have those for stats now where it really gets good is melee well maker so melee well maker is going to make a elemental world that matches my subclass when i get a powered melee kill we're going to be getting lots of those because we have an infinite amount of powered melees as long as we don't mess up the loop um but we have lots of strength to get it back anyway so this is going to be very easy to maintain and with those arc wells because we are an arc so that will make arc wells we're going to be using well of ions which is going to increase the melee damage of our next melee so it's going to increase the damage of our next melee basically um which is going to stack with the fragment that i had here uh spark of feedback so spark of feedback and well of ions will stack which means you've got kind of a pseudo liar's handshake that makes you invis and heals you a ton, which is awesome. Um, and then on top of that, I have Bountiful Wells, so we can actually, you know, get a bit more uh, ability energy back when I pick up multiple wells at once. Or I could actually save a well there, melee, and then pick up the second well and melee again. And then both of those melees that I just did will be stronger from Well of Ions rather than just one of them. Um, so yeah, everything else in the build is just whatever you want. I'm just helping out... Uh, my grenade launcher, as you can see, 
because heavy weapon doesn't matter. You can have whatever heavy you want. I'm using Eager for speed because Touch of Malice does all the work for me when it comes to boss DPS, uh, especially when you've got multiple touches and you know, you're know you just blighting everything and just deleting everything. It's awesome. Uh, I have Kinetic Siphon. I, I could use a Harmonic Siphon and just make uh, orbs from Forbearance since this is my Adclo weapon. Uh, but yeah, aside from that, you could have whatever you want in here. Make sure you got resistances uh, and whatever else in your chest piece, though. I do recommend that because, uh, especially when you got something like Touch of Malice or Outbreak, uh, it's got infinite ammo, so you can kind of just free up reserves if you want to and have resistances. But aside from that, that's the build. I'm just going to show some gameplay, uh, just a regular loop of the build against just regular ads in Shura Tree, and then I'll just kind of show it off in you know, another random place, and whatever. I don't know. I don't know what I'll do with the gameplay at the end. But, yeah, that's the hunter build. Let me know what you think. Hopefully you enjoy this, and adios.